Hi everybody, this is Diane and I'd like to thank you for joining me in my studio today. I'm going to do a session. I don't have really any plans except for using up some stuff to make ephemera. But I just want to chat with you a little bit about my end of year and beginning of year plans. Um, I did have a plan to work on a journal project and um, basically because people sent me stuff to make this kind of journal, an automobile theme, vintage automobile. And um, it started with a, a digital kit that I received that uh, I did, I printed the digital kit and I, it was like a year and a half ago. I printed it and I showed it. It was called Car Lane. And um, she did not ask me to be on her design team or anything. She just offered me this free digital and she sent it to me. And I have purchased and used some of her kits. Uh, it's Home Book and Treasure, I think is the name of her shop. Anyway, because I got that, then um, some people sent me some other pieces, great, great pieces to use in an automobile journal. And I was excited about them. I thought, well, this is going to be fun. I'm not a car person, and I wouldn't have thought I wanted to make a car journal. And I found things, too. I found um, calendars, old calendars, and gift wrap, and other things. So I had a pretty good assortment of things to make this journal, and I started making it. I covered some old book covers with this fabric that someone sent me in a happy mail. And then, and I cut pages. I've got pages all cut for this journal. And I was doing two of them. So I have two covers done and pages cut for two journals. And then I just, I couldn't get into it. I was not excited about making it. And I have too many things that I really, really want to make. And I thought, well, it'll only take me a week or so to get these two journals done. But I thought I have too many things to do to work on something that I'm not excited about. And I'm very, very sorry for those of you who wanted to see me make these journals and those of you who sent me supplies for these journals. I saved some of the supplies to make uh, masculine themed journals because I will make some of those, but the automobiles are going to go bye-bye because I just have too many other things that I really want to do. So I have this divided up into two portions and after Christmas I will be showing all of this and I will be putting these kits in my shop. I hope it's something that somebody can really make some treasures with because there's some great stuff in there. So I will get back to that after Christmas. So I thought the best way to end the new year would be to do some stash busting. So I got out some Rand McNally um, Junior Elf books the little size, and these are the only three that I have. Alice in Wonderland, Davy Deer's New Red Scarf, and The Three Wishes. I love these books. Love, love, love these books. And I'm going to use my Bind It All and put the wire, the O-rings, in them and make some really fun notebook type of journals with these. And I will also use my Bind It All to make five little golden book journals. I have Counting Rhymes, The Ginghams, Raggedy Ann, and Marcella's first day at school, just like me, and nursery songs. So I will use all kinds of things. It's fun to use the wires because I can just just put things in like cards and things that you normally can't fold into a signature. You just put them in and they flip. It's really fun to do these. So these will be some Stash Buster journals and that's what I'm going to work on as my next project and I might get some of them done by the end of the year. And then I thought I would also do some stash busting journals where they would have the spine and the sewn in signatures. So I'm making these two journals. They're um, vintage textbooks that I got at the flea market two or th two and a half, three years ago, something like that. And I just thought these would be really fun covers and I'll decorate the fronts of them too. This got torn when I took the book apart. So it will definitely, I just love this color. Wow, it got windy outside. Well, maybe I glued it down. No, I didn't. Anyway, you can see it's torn there. It is a flap. I just can't pick it up. There we go. But I'll glue that down and I'll put something there to cover that. But that's just a really cool cover. 
and I'm looking forward to doing that kind of a stash busting journal too. So, end of the year 2021, beginning of 2022, we are going to bust some stash. So today, I have some things on my desk that I didn't clear away. I did a really good job of cleaning my room um, earlier this week and putting away tidbits and vacuuming and things like that. But I just piled these things up because I thought instead of putting these away, why don't I make something with them? So that's what I would like to do today. And then I went to my drawer that is marked to make ephemera and just grabbed a handful of stuff that I can use to supplement these things if I need to. So I have this tag base that I started when I was making those tags inspired by Nancy. I have this piece that's die cut, border cut. <coughs> I have these very fragile envelopes that I just, I fear for their life because they are so fragile, they're so old. So I think I'm going to try to do something with them and preserve them. And then I have some other bits and pieces, including some leftovers from Taylor made journals, chubby sheet wallpaper that I used for my book readers journals. And then I have these cards, just some plain cardstock cards, and I'm going to, it's a very lightweight cardstock, but I think I'm going to use these as substrates. So let's, let's work on the envelopes first. It's torn here. It's, they're cracked everywhere. The corner's torn off. I don't know if I can preserve them. I could at least preserve the pieces of them and use them in collage, but we're going to try to actually preserve it as an envelope. It's going to require some major surgery. <laughs> so first thing I want to do is... get all of this up without tearing more. There. Here's the flap. And it's in tatters. So I think I am going to collage something on there. I was thinking washi tape, but I think I just want to use something old and collage it. So this is from a very old book called The Christian Psalmist. And it's not really music, but it's the Psalms. And you know, the Psalms are songs. They're Hebrew songs, and they were meant to be sung. So this, I'm not sure what all these notations are, but it is a psalm, psalm book. So I'm going to use some of this. And if I have to cover the entire envelope to preserve it, it probably won't be worth it. Because then, what's the point? You can't see the vintage, vintage envelope. Sorry, I've turned away because I'm getting some scrap paper. Hopefully you can still hear me. So I want to use my glue stick here. So I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to give it a shot. I do want something all across that fold that has to be completely covered. I guess I better let that dry before I cut it. And maybe a piece of this wallpaper, digital. ink on, on that white spot, the white parts here. 
I think I I usually keep my uh, vintage photo ink handy, but I think when I clean, I put it away in here. There's vintage photo. It felt so good to get this room clean. And I think I mentioned in a video that I've been taking a little bit of time in the evenings when I have some time to go through things once again and pull out extra stuff, thinning things out so that I will be ready to do some de-stashes in my shop, both vintage and non-vintage items. See how ragged this is on this edge. Both edges are very fragile. So I'm going to cover that. And I don't know if the rest of the envelope will actually be usable or if it's just all too fragile. put something there because there is a crack here and it shows there. This is um, the vintage greeting card. It aged around the edge so maybe that would be good to put there. decoration. My Christmas is all over the place this year. Well, it is most years, and it probably is for a lot of you, too. So, some of my kids and their spouses have to work holidays. So we do what we can when we can. So um, I went to see my parents yesterday and gave them their Christmas gifts. They live pretty close to me, very close to me actually. Um, and I invited them to come. I wasn't sure what I was doing on Christmas Day because I was waiting find out what was going on with my kids. And so now I know. So I invited them to come and have Christmas lunch with us, but they just wanted to stay home and make their own ham, which I understand. But anyway, I gave them their gifts yesterday. And then I had to go to a dinner. My granddaughter's 11th birthday was yesterday. She's the baby. Layla. So she had a birthday dinner yesterday at a restaurant. Just a local restaurant, so went there. It was at 6 o'clock, but they had another party, too. And so they were extremely busy. And so it took us a long time to have our dinner. 
6 o'clock and I didn't get home till almost 8. But I was enjoying the time with my kids. And the birthday girl had fun. I think this was just a cut off piece. I'm going to put that right there. So we used to have this tradition in our family of we always opened our stockings on Christmas Eve and we would have a chocolate fondue at some point. That one wasn't really set in stone as to when we were going to do it. A lot of times it was um, more New Year's than Christmas. But we decided we're going to do that, do the fondue on Christmas Eve this year. I don't do stockings anymore because you know, my kids, if they have a stocking, they do their own with their kids. And my husband and I still bought stocking stuffers for each other while he was here. But since I'm alone now, I am not going to, you know, fill a stocking for myself. So so I don't do stockings. Anyway, um, and we used to watch... Don't laugh. We used to watch The Muppet Christmas Carol every Christmas Eve and have, after we opened our stockings, and we would have cheese and crackers and the summer sausage and Christmas cookies and watch The Muppet Christmas Carol. We love it. We love The Muppet Christmas Carol. It was very hard to watch it the first year after. I don't think we did watch it. I didn't after my husband died, but I do watch it now. And there's a scene it makes me cry every year, but it's okay. So anyway, we just have lots of plans all over the place. And we used to do popovers. I, I would make popovers and scrambled eggs every Christmas morning. And last year, I made them for myself. But this year... My daughter is off on Christmas Eve, but she has to work Christmas Day, and she wanted popovers, so on Christmas Eve, she's going to come over about 10 o'clock, bring her boys, and I'm going to make popovers for us, and my parents are going to join us. I was so happy. My dad is the one that introduced popovers to our family, and my mom can't eat them anymore because she has to eat gluten-free. I hope that I'm not boring you while I'm talking and collaging. <laughs> I, I have a hard time keeping everything straight of what's happening when and who's going to be there. And <laughs> I had to write it down. <laughs> but anyway, cause so I would know, so I would have the right foods prepared or whatever. So I was very happy that my parents decided that they would join us for popovers on Christmas Eve morning brunch. And then, I'm not sure, I don't think Judy's going to stay here all day, but the, and, um, after my son gets out of work later, then they'll all come back and we're going to have our ham dinner. But my son's wife and my daughter's husband will both be working. So it's not our real Christmas dinner. It is. It's my it's my real Christmas dinner. But I don't think this is going to work. Because this is just cracking. And if I glue this to it, it will probably... Well, let's try it. It might glue this part closed, but we might still be able to get into some of it. I don't know if this is work, worth all this effort. So, anyway, I will have Christmas Eve dinner. Ham dinner with... My son and my daughter and three of my grandchildren. And then we might watch, we might watch the Muppet Christmas Carol or the Polar Express. That's a new favorite of mine. I love it. And of course, we have to have Coco when we watch the Polar Express for that very short scene where they have Coco on the train. I'm going to put her right there. And then on Christmas Day, I'll be alone for the first part of the day, but 
Actually, we're going to have our Christmas dinner on Christmas Day. See, I told you I get confused. Because my son will get out of work. No, he's not working, but my daughter will get out of work at 2.30. So she will be able to join us for our ham dinner. And again, uh, my daughter-in-law will be there, but my son-in-law won't. I know I'm talking too much. So I, suffice it to say, I have Christmas stuff all over the place going on. And our family Christmas celebration with everybody there and the opening of gifts, that will happen on New Year's Eve. Because <laughs> that's the only time everybody is off work. Well, I think that's going to happen later in the day, afternoon, because my daughter has to work. But the ones that have to work, you know, like uh, my daughter-in-law, my son-in-law, when they work, they work a 12-hour shift, so that's the whole day. They're both off on New Year's Eve. So when Judy gets out of work, then we can have a family celebration and open gifts. And we'll do that at my son's house and we will have our cheese and crackers at that point. So, now you have the whole lowdown, <laughs> like you really cared. I'm gonna put something here, because there's some cracks there, and then I think, I think it's good. Do you think that was worth it? Maybe I'll put some more of that music, that Psalms paper. There's the page I tore already. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. I'll tear another one. I'll just wrap it around a little bit like that. And the bottom is good. Didn't have any cracks. But this envelope would have to be treated with care if I put it in a journal. But that surgery is complete. This one is from Jacob Biles, or John Biles, and it says 50 cents from J.W. Hurst. And so this is from the 1800s. I had a bunch of stuff that came in that cigar box, if you remember, um, that wooden cigar box that he built, a, made into a false bottom. With Anyway, he had all kinds of receipts folded up into it, so this is really old. And I'm not sure, I think, because there's a chunk taken out of here, but I think if I just wrap something around there that we could still use it and just put something small in this part. But it, it's written on upside down. So I don't know. This, I think, was a button envelope. It was all folded up like this and stapled. You can see the holes in it all the way through. So I want to move on from envelopes, though, and do something else. If you weren't watching, I would probably continue on the envelopes. Let's take one of these cards and one of these images. These images came out of a book where you could take the CD out of the back pocket and print images. But the CD was gone when I had the book because I got it at a thrift store or something. So I just cut images right out of the book. And I decided I was organizing my ephemera box, like my journal card box, 
And these were in there, but they're not journal cards yet. They have to be made into journal cards. So I decided I would work on that. There's some red in there, so I think incorporating some red in that would be great. But I thought I was going to be alone all day on Christmas again. But I'm not, and I'm very happy about that. seeing what I can use to put in that little corner. How about some of this Edith Holden paper? I would have to work on that drawer that says to make ephemera for probably months <laughs> in order to use everything in that drawer. It's not a big drawer, but it is stuffed. I mixed up some sugar cookie dough yesterday and after I visited my parents I rolled it out and cut it and baked it but then I had to go to a birthday party you know so I had to do it all in stages it has to chill for a little while just for half an hour but I didn't have time to cut it out and bake it because I wanted to visit my parents this is just a little bit it's not cut quite straight because I cut it out with scissors. Do the bottom edge too. So today I'm going to decorate my cookies. And by decorate, I mean put some frosting on them and some sprinkles. And that's all I do anymore because I don't have the kids here to help me. But I also have some roll dough raising in the oven. I put it in there because it's warmer in there. It's not turned on. I turn it on very low for a, just a couple minutes just to warm it up. And then I turn the oven off and put the bread dough in there so it rises. Because I keep my house cool. <laughs> and bread dough doesn't like a cool atmosphere. 
So that's what I have to do today is frost cookies and make the rolls. I think this is very sweet. And I think it might need something else, like maybe some lace. So let's try some stash busting with lace. These are lace scraps. Just go with that. And tomorrow, which would be the twenty third, I will make my peanut butter fudge. And then I think I'm all set. I should round the corners. I think so. Then I could put a tab wherever when I decide to use this if I want it to pull out at the side I could put a tab here or a tab there when I'm ready to use it let's do another one of those cards I don't I won't need to do much to that just back it Maybe put some lace at the top or the bottom. Let's figure that out. That's a pretty ombre, sorry silk, that matches the colors really nicely. There's another piece of it. I would probably sew that on, kind of scrunch it up and sew it on, but I think I want it at the top. So I'm just going to glue this piece to the card and set it over at my sewing machine so I can do that part later. And that is a really quick journaling card. And when I sew this on, I'll probably sew all the way around just to give it a decorative look. And maybe add this little piece of lace on it somewhere too. This is gorgeous. I want to use that. I'm 
And that looks pretty behind it. I feel like it needs to have a border around it so I could mat it with uh, cardstock or I could put some lace around it. Tiny little snippet of lace there. I can really doll this all up, couldn't I? What I really want is something in this corner, but I think that looks weird there. Rosettes in different colors. They're just not in my scrap bin. I think I like them because they have the green and the red in them. I don't know how many I'll put on, so I'm going to cut three off and we'll figure it out. Okay, 
first things first. I am going to round some corners, I think. I use this this time because that other little one was hard to use with this cardstock. This will go on the back of the card of the image. I don't want too much lace hanging off the edge because this will probably get tucked into a pocket. So just a little bit. There, another journaling card, and it's 43 minutes into the video, so I'm going to have to say goodbye. And I need to check on my roll dough. So we did three journaling cards, except I have to do a little sewing on this one. That's what goes on this one. Very pretty. These could go in the same journal with red. And then we did this envelope, which was fun. So I'm going to leave these things out. Maybe I'll get back in here and do a little more. I hope that you um, enjoyed crafting along with me today. And I hope you'll come back to see some Stash Buster stuff. Well, this was a Stash Buster project right here. But I have one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven more of those images that I want to use. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a creative day today, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.